This video is intended to provide Oregon residents basic information about bankruptcy options. Keep in mind how bankruptcy actually works will differ based on each individual case and is something that should be reviewed with a lawyer before filing a bankruptcy. So let's start with why you might file for bankruptcy in the first place. The purpose of bankruptcy is to give honest people a fresh start from their debts. In most cases, people who file bankruptcy keep all their property and wipe out all their debts. These debts could include anything from medical bills and credit cards to repossessions and foreclosures. This process where all or most of your debts are legally wiped out is called a discharge. It means after the case closes, creditors are not allowed to try to collect dischargeable debts that were included in the bankruptcy. The two big benefits of bankruptcy are stopping collections and eliminating debt. Filing bankruptcy will stop all collection activity by creditors. This means all creditor phone calls, bills or collection letters, garnishments, lawsuits, foreclosures or tax collections must come to an immediate halt. Most people think bankruptcy is a negative, particularly when it comes to your credit report. But eliminating debt through bankruptcy can allow a person to rebuild their credit over time maybe even to a better place than it was. As you rebuild credit, you can still obtain credit, and the terms of credits you can obtain from lenders improve over time. Some people who have unpaid debts may not need the benefit of a bankruptcy filing. These people are called judgment-proof because they have no income or property that can legally be taken from them, no matter how much debt they have. But even some people who are truly judgment-proof still want to file bankruptcy because it brings the collection letters, phone calls, and lawsuits to a halt. So let's go over the two most common types of personal bankruptcy. The most common is Chapter 7. Most people who file Chapter 7 bankruptcy cases have no valuable property they could sell to pay their debts, things like an extra car or a second house or stocks to sell. This means they keep the household items and personal property they own and wipe out all their dischargeable debts. These cases take about three months to complete. The second most common type of personal bankruptcy is Chapter 13. This is also known as a wage earner plan or repayment plan. People who file Chapter 13 have regular income and intend to repay a portion of their debts back through a court-approved repayment plan. Chapter 13 is usually for more complicated situations, like tax debt, car loan issues, traffic tickets, and things like that. But Chapter 13 oftentimes can help people who simply have more income than household expenses per month and who don't qualify for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. At the end of the Chapter 13 case, debts that haven't been repaid are wiped out with the entry of the Chapter 13 discharge order. These cases usually take three to five years to complete. So let's talk about where you file your bankruptcy. You file in the state where you've lived for the majority of the last 180 days. So if you've moved a lot, or have been out of state or out of the country, or if you're in active military service, let your attorney know. So you might be wondering, can anyone qualify for bankruptcy? Well, the short answer is yes. Bankruptcy is a legal right found in the U.S. Constitution. But just because someone qualifies for bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean bankruptcy is the best option for them. It's important to provide complete information to your attorney. The type of debt you have and are hoping to wipe out is important when considering bankruptcy. Most debts, like credit cards, repossessions, medical bills, personal loans, and many others, can be wiped out in bankruptcy. This is why bankruptcy is sometimes called a fresh start. But not all debts can be eliminated. Debts like criminal fees and fines, alimony and child support, and certain tax debts can't. Student loan debt usually can't be eliminated either. But in certain circumstances, bankruptcy judges have the ability to wipe out student loans in cases where repaying them would cause undue hardship. The laws surrounding what can and cannot be eliminated in bankruptcy can be complicated. So when trying to understand whether your debts would qualify, a bankruptcy lawyer can be super helpful. Now let's talk about how filing bankruptcy affects your property. Let's start with exemption laws. Exemption laws prevent certain belongings from being taken by the bankruptcy trustee for the benefit of your creditors. They can be helpful because they allow you to keep certain everyday items and property, so you can still maintain a minimum standard of living during a bankruptcy. In the vast majority of bankruptcy cases, people file and keep everything they own. Even some types of income are protected from creditors under exemption laws, like Social Security income. All states have their own exemption laws, as does the federal government. So just like with your residency, 
If you've moved a lot in the last couple years, been out of state or out of the country, or if you're in active military service, let your attorney know so they can figure out which set of exemptions apply to you. The last thing to understand about property in a bankruptcy is the role of the Chapter 7 bankruptcy trustee. The bankruptcy trustee has many responsibilities in a bankruptcy. They review the bankruptcy paperwork that a person files with the court. They sell the property a person isn't entitled to keep. They also handle secured loans. Lots of people have property financed or secured through personal property like automobiles, homes, or furniture. What will happen is, on property that's subject to secured loans, the Chapter 7 bankruptcy trustee will look at the amount of the loan and the value of the property. If the value of the property is less than the amount of the secured loan, then there's no equity in the property for the bankruptcy trustee to keep and give to creditors. If there's not enough equity in the type of property secured by a loan, the trustee will not be interested in liquidating the property for the benefit of the bankruptcy estate. You'll usually be able to keep the property as long as you continue to make payments to the secured lender. In some cases, though, there's a lot of equity and property above what you can keep in a Chapter 7 case. So often what the bankruptcy trustee looks at and considers for valuation varies greatly from what a debtor might believe is the correct value. This is typically found in real estate holdings or motor vehicles. In those cases, the trustee is empowered to sell the property, pay the secured creditor, provide you the amount of equity you can protect, and use the rest of the proceeds to pay your debts. In cases where there's a potential for equity, it's crucial you have your case reviewed by an attorney before filing. One thing to keep in mind is that any property you acquire after the bankruptcy case is filed usually isn't subject to the bankruptcy and can't be taken to pay your debts. There are just a few exceptions to this rule, including inheritance, life insurance proceeds, a property settlement, or divorce decrees. Bankruptcy is a powerful tool that allows people experiencing financial difficulties to obtain the relief necessary for a fresh start to their lives. Filing for bankruptcy can provide the help needed to alleviate financial stress and allow folks to move on with their lives without the burden of debts that they can't hope to repay. Ask an experienced bankruptcy attorney whether filing bankruptcy is the right decision for you and your family.